जैसे भारत के आईटी सेक्टर का सामर्थ्य आज दुनिया देख रही है वैसे ही आने वाले दिनों में भारत के स्पेस सेक्टर की ताकत नई ऊंचाई पर होगी Brewing Indian space tech startup Agni Cool today announced the opening of its rocket factory one it is India's first ever rocket facility dedicated to 3D printed rocket engines at scale Agni Cool a space tech startup incubated by IIT Madras Research Park is all set to make smaller satellite launches easier and faster Hello everyone as of year 2022 global space industry is 546 billion dollars but painfully india shares only 2% of that that's not a good sign for our fifth largest economy right thankfully even government is very much aware of that and implemented the final copy of historical indian space policy 2023 indian space policy 2023 earlier this month the government has approved indian space policy 2023 now under this policy isro has been asked to transfer mature systems to the industry for commercial exploitation honestly speaking it is one of the cardinal reforms of the indian space industry because of two major reforms firstly isro will get back to its primary function of research and development in the indian space industry and will not actively participate in the business aspect of the industry secondly the policy will allow all the non government entities to enter the indian space industry through in space in space will be a government agency under the department of space it will be a single window facility for all the non government entities to help them with all the legal and administrative formalities to start their business this will not only help the nation to achieve 40 billion dollar mark by 2030 but also yield one of the finest discoveries and innovation of the space industry which brings me to agnikul cosmos a company which have all the right ingredients to become the pioneer of the industry only if they tackle the biggest hurdles of the industry so at agnikul cosmos we are building small rockets or small launch vehicles that can take uh, satellites to space on demand basically we want to go to space I want anyone to go to space within a two week time frame so in this episode we'll understand the very dynamics and the economics of the space industry how agnikul is making their own space in the industry the core problem of the industry and how agnikul's key strategies are trying to solve them and lastly the gray elements of the industry and how agnikul should color down them as soon as possible to sustain in the long run so let's begin 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 So let me give you the structure we will be following in the next few minutes. I'll start with the journey of Agnikul, and in the way I'll tell you three core strategies of Agnikul, namely 100 to 700 kilometer mark, 30 to 300 kg mark, and a standardization, and how each of these strategies are targeting and solving the core problem of the industries. So the journey of Agnikul starts with the blurry images and the inciphering voices of the Doordarshan channel when India launched its first PSLVs and GSLVs into space. Like any child of imagination, it sparked the interest of a child named Srinath Ravichandran into the world of space, who later on becomes the founder of Agnikul Cosmos. But space as an industry had a very little employability back then. It still is, but it was much more tougher back then. So his aspirations were not appreciated by the people around him. and he ended up studying his second favorite subject that is electrical engineering but as much he enjoyed the subject he did not enjoy working in the industry like how majority of students faces what they are studying and what they are working is completely different and in the meantime he discovered about this course called financial engineering in columbia university in new york so he started packing his bag after completing his course he started working in the wall streets in the financial sector but as you say with this founder's mind this innate nature of finding oneself the finding true self did not let him settle and guess what he enrolled himself into a film school and for the next 4 years he worked and attended the film school by the evening after work see that what makes me very excited about founder's life it's never about conventional path it's always about experimentation and finding new paths and when later on it completely makes sense when the dots are connected that course from the film school taught him the very fine art of screenplay writing which helped him in multiple ways in the agnikul venture but film school was still not his destiny 
the strings of his childhood passion were still pulling him towards it. It was just taking different forms, either in the form of filmmaking or deep sea diving or even getting a license to fly an airplane. But nothing came closer to his passion for space. At the same time, SpaceX was getting into a lot of buzz at that time. And he realized there is nothing much about space in New York. So he shifted his company from New York to LA and he began networking with more and more people in the space industry. Those meetups helped him to understand the very dynamics of the space industry and the core problems related to those industries. And the understanding of these problems ultimately helped him to make the core strategies of today's Agnikul, starting with the first strategy that is 100 to 700 km mark. See, space may be limitless, but the reason of economic value is astonishingly small. To understand the dynamics of space industry, Earth's orbit are majorly categorized into three segments. That is low Earth orbit, medium Earth orbit, and geostationary Earth orbit. Low Earth orbit ranges up to 2000 km from Earth's surface. And honestly speaking, I was shocked to know that around 85% of today's satellite are orbiting within LEO, mostly with communication and Earth imaging satellites. And it has a strong reason for that we'll be discussing in a moment. Next is MEO, which ranges from 2000 km to 35786 km, and a mere 3% of satellites are orbiting in this range, mostly popular for navigation satellites like GPS. And lastly, the GEO is exactly at 35786 km above equator, popularly for direct broadcast satellites or television satellites. Now let's talk about LEO and why LEO has become the hottest spot for new A satellites. See, if you look around the world and the recent development in the technologies, whether it's AI, machine learning or Internet of Things, everything requires data, more and more data, precise, accurate, valuable and quick data to support these technologies to become much more advanced. And the existing establishments are not good enough to provide these kinds of data. So it makes sense, right, that there is a spike in demand for better communication services through satellites or better imaging of our surfaces through satellites. And for multiple reasons, LEO is the perfect spot to access these kinds of data. If you look into this data, in 2022, around 95% of satellites launched were communication and imaging satellites. We'll discuss more about LEO and the advancement in the small satellites in a while, but LEO is all we have right now for better advancement in technologies. And Agnikul is well aware of this fact and hence they are only focusing on this particular reason for their business. The rockets are designed in a way that it could reach a maximum of 100 to 700 kilometers for now. It's like Uber within the city, but only in the space. But the next obvious question is, is there Uber a car, a truck or a train? When Srinath moved to LA and was networking with more and more people in the space industry, he discovered many of the colleges had their small satellites ready. They wanted to test in the space, but who the hell will take their small satellites into space? Big companies like SpaceX, NASA were taking tons and tons of satellites which actually made them profitable. This core problem and the further study of the trends of the space helped him to make the second core strategy of Agnikul that is called 30 to 300 kg mark. In the year 2022, 95% of the satellites that were launched were small satellites. What are small satellites? Well, NASA defines them as any satellites less than 180 kgs are small satellites. There are various categories of small satellites, mini satellites, micro satellites, nano satellites, but everything falls below 180 kgs. Now the question here is, why so many small satellites are being launched? Well, in single statement, due to the advancement in technology called constellations. Let's understand constellations through GPS satellites. Let's assume you are on a trip from Delhi to Chennai and you are using Google Maps to access GPS for navigation. There are around 31 GPS satellites operation in MEO right now. So at any point of travel during the journey, at least four satellites will give you the exact location of your device. A single satellite will be highly inefficient in providing this kind of exact location. So when multiple satellites functions collaboratively to provide more efficient service, this is called constellation. And constellations are not just limited to GPS. It even works better for 3D imaging services, better telecommunications or better internet communications and many more. So instead of putting huge junk of a satellite into the space, companies prefer small satellite for better transportation, better efficient services, cheaper maintenance and many more other reasons. And hence, there is a huge spike in the supply and the demand of these small satellites. But what about future trend? Are small satellites even relevant in the future too? Well, looking at the trend, yes, at least in the next few decades. If you try to understand this data, a small satellites market is expected to almost double by the next decade, mostly concentrated in the LEO. 
So to become a dominant player in the small satellite market, Agnikul is specifically focusing on the payloads of 30 to 300 kgs. So as the second core strategies, their rockets are designed specifically to carry the payloads of small satellites. We actually identified a problem that you know small satellites are not able to go to space in time. So we wanted to build a solution wherein within two weeks, anyone or any you know satellite can be put in space. So the products that we're building are meant to have rapid, you know, on-demand launch access as this week. But as a matter of fact, small satellite rockets are not new to the industry. Most of the startups and advancing nations are already gearing up with the small satellite rockets, China being on the top of that. So to differentiate in the market, Agnikul came up with their third core strategy, that is standardization. If you look into the current space industry, there is no standardization at all, either in price or time. Let's understand this problem in depth. If a company wants to send 5 tons of payload through SpaceX Falcon, the price will be something around $10,000 to $15,000 per kg. But if a company wants to send 50 kgs of payload, the price will be some arbitrary number like $100,000 per kg. Or it can even go $8,000 per kg if the flight is taking next week and there is a small slot available. But it's not just a price problem. Even if a company gets a small rocket taking off, the waiting time is so high, like one year or something, that the company cannot plan anything for their business. This is a serious bottleneck in the industry. And Agnikul wants to completely revolutionize this process through their standardization strategy. Let's understand their strategy, comparing it with SpaceX Falcon. Let's say a company or a college wants to send their satellite of 200 kgs into space by SpaceX Falcon. The reality is there is no clear picture of when the rocket is going to take off, what the prices will be, or will you even get a slot or not? But if a company wants to send the satellite of 200 kgs into space with Agnikul, Agnikul will be sending their satellite within 2 to 3 weeks of time. They will be charging the exact same price per kg, either for 30 kg or 300 kg of payload. And they have the capacity to build the rocket specifically for the client. So there is no question about getting a slot or not. This means a company can book their services specifying these details and their satellite will be in the space within a few weeks. This will be a game changer for any company or research institute who wants to send their satellite into space. Well, sending a satellite into space within a time frame of two to three weeks seemed too promising to me until I found about Agnikul's patented single piece 3D printed rocket engine called Agnilet. See, a rocket engine is a very complicated machine with hundreds and hundreds of pieces into that. But Agnikul has managed to compress all of that into a single 3D printed engine. It means no longer assembly line, no complex supply chain or no human errors. This means quick and standardized rocket engines within a few days of time. And they have an in-house facility for that. This is a remarkable innovation and world's one of its kind. See, the interesting part about any rocket is that they use multiple such engines in the first stage of the rocket. Agnikul is planning to use 4 to 7 such engines in the rocket, customized as per the order. Like if they are carrying 200 kgs of payload, they can use 4 engines. Or if they are carrying 300 kgs of payload, they can use 7 engines. This means building an entire rocket and flying as per the order. This malleability in the service can give Agnikul a strong edge against the competition. But it's not as black and white as it seems. There are few grey elements in the industry. Agnikul must color down over a period of time to become a sustainable player. One of the primary hurdles is the price barrier. See, it makes sense that Agnikul is not focusing much on the price part of the entire launch. Because this is not a price sensitive market. Their price will be standardized price. But will it be the cheapest in the industry or not is still a big question. See, the first stage of the rocket is the most expensive part of the rocket. And after SpaceX and few startups have managed to reuse that part, the industry price is definitely going to sink to a new low in the long run. So the most important aspect of Agnikul's future strategy should be to build a technology in this aspect. But with the strong support of Indian government and ISRO in providing the right guidance and technology to these startups, we can hope best for the Indian space industry. And that's the end of the case study. I linked on all the resources I used to make this case study. And if you found anything valuable, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.